come in. A very, very warm welcome. It is just gone eight o'clock. It's actually a minute or two after eight here in East Africa. It's one minute past eight. A very, very warm welcome to you all. I can see people are logging in now. As you come in, I would ask that you please put your name and uh, where you're logging in from in the chat. We are expecting people here from across the world. So it would be a good idea for us to interact. I see some people on camera. That's very nice, if at all possible. If you can be on camera, this is how we meet people. This is how we make friends. I can see we are 40 people so far. I'm expecting a bigger number than that. So I'm just going to give it a minute or two now. It would be a good idea for you as you get ready to pick up a pen and pad. I have my pad here with me. I have my pen. I would recommend that you do the same because we are going to be sharing quite a bit of information and it will be a good idea for you to be able to record, to write that down in case you want some of those details. I see some familiar names here. I see some familiar faces. Lucy, it's very good to see you. I see Lee Wan Boy there, very good to see you. I see someone who's logging in from Ghana. I see people from Nairobi. I see a face here from the US. I see quite a number of people here, Lusaka. We have people here from all over the world. Rosemary, I see you there. I was expecting to see you. Some people are new to me, some I have met before. It's very, very good to see all of you. As you're coming in, I see that everyone is muted. That is beautiful. I want us to use the next 90 minutes as profitably as possible. And so if you're going to have any questions as we go along, Joyce is going to be making a presentation. There's a whole lot of information that we want to share with you. And I'm proposing that if you have any question as we go along, please put it in the chat. Please put the question in the chat. We are going to have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. We are not going to interrupt Joyce as she's speaking. We're going to be uh, posing all of our questions at the end of the presentation. And therefore, I am proposing that if you have any questions during the presentation, I am proposing that you put that in the chat so that then we are going to be able to progress and make the most. Now we expect to be here for the next 90 minutes. And therefore I'm recommending that if you want to pick up something to drink, now would be the time I'm going to be introducing Joyce in the next minute or so. So this is your opportunity to pick up a cup of tea, uh, your whatever it is that you like to drink on a Saturday evening, depending on which part of the world you're in. I see a majority of people here are from Kenya but I do see people from across the world. So whatever time it is for you, you are very, very most welcome. We are very glad to have you here. We are very, very glad to have you here. We are going to present to be presenting to you an opportunity that could absolutely change your life or change the life of your loved ones. I know we have people uh, logging in who are parents of nurses, people who are uh, planning to change careers to nursing, people who have siblings that are nurses or friends that are nurses. All these are people that are going to be logging into our meeting today. And therefore, whoever, whatever category you're in, we're going to be sharing a lot of information. I see a lot of people have logged in even as I am speaking. And a very, very warm welcome to you. My name is Christine Mwetelli. I'm going to be your host this evening. I would recommend that you pick up a pen and pad so that then you can take notes because we are going to be sharing a lot of information with details and with the data, with the figures. And so we are going to be able to run through it uh, rather quickly. We are trying to make sure that we can do this within the next 90 minutes. Solomon, I would propose that you put your question in the chat. Should you have any questions or comments during the presentation, I am proposing that you put that in the chat. We are going to address each and every question that is posed to us because we are trying to use this to, to build people's lives. And therefore, if you have any questions, I'm proposing that you put them in the chat. Now, there is one other thing I would like you to do. After this, we are going to be forming a group we are going to be forming a group both on Facebook and on WhatsApp. We are going to be forming a group on Facebook and WhatsApp, and we are going to put the people in that group who attended this webinar. And so far, I see 80 people are already in the room. And 
we are going to be sharing information as we go along. A lot of people have, have expressed an interest to want to relocate to the US and we are here to help you with all the information that we can for you to be able to do that. So we are going to form a WhatsApp group, a Facebook group. This is how you get in the Facebook group. Go into the chat and put your name, your email address and your WhatsApp number. Name, email address and WhatsApp number in the chat. You can do that privately to me, Christine. You don't have, if you don't want to share your information to everybody in the chat, just uh, send a direct message to me, Christine Mwetelli, and give me your name, your email address and your WhatsApp number. Please give me your country code with the WhatsApp number. If you give me 08 or 07, I'll be helpless to contact you. Put the 245 or the 256 or whatever the code is of the country that you're logging in from. I think I'm done with the housekeeping at this point. And without further ado, I am ready to put on Joyce. I'm ready to put on Joyce. Thank you very much. I see people are still logging in. But I like to say that I don't like to punish those who arrived on time. There's people who are still logging in and will continue to log in as we go on. So I'm proposing that we get started already. We expect to do this presentation within about an hour and then we will take your, your questions and your comments as we go along. Now, the lady that I'm going to introduce is known to me just as Joyce. Joyce and I have known each other since we were teenagers. We met in high school and by an interesting coincidence, we were in the same class in high school as well as at the university. We now live across the world from each other, but we are very much in touch and I'm sure you have seen her in my post on social media. If you're someone who has been uh, following me on social media, you know that Joyce is someone that I usually interact with a lot. Now, Joyce is a nurse. Joyce has been a nurse, which is what is of interest to all of you who are here. Joyce is a nurse and has been for the last about 15 years or so. She's going to tell us more about that. But Joyce is a published author. She's an author of two books already. She's going to show those to you. She's an advanced practicing nurse. She's an advanced practicing nurse. She's a patient advocate. She's a public speaker. She's a nurse educator and a nurse coach. She is what is known in the profession as MSNRN. In other words, she has a master's of science in nursing and she's also a registered nurse. So definitely there's something I like to call the right to be hard. And Joyce has earned the right to be had. She is completely qualified to share the information that she's sharing today. So you want to give her your undivided attention and listen to what she has to say here today. It's very generous of her. Joyce does truly not need to do this, but she has chosen to be generous with her time and with her information and share all this with you absolutely free of charge. So without further ado, Joyce, let me just unmute you so that then we can be able to hear from you in one second. Let me just unmute Joyce. There you are, there you are. Over to you, Joyce Owaga. Uh, right. Okay, thank you. Share the screen. Hello, everybody. Um, good. Evening. I know it's good evening in Africa, right here for us. It's good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for showing up. Um, I hope that in this uh, next hour, I'll be able to empower you and um, give you as much information as we can in the next hour. Now, most of this information is going to be generic. I can't like um, make it personalized, but it's most of the information that at the end of this sharing, you should be well equipped. You should be well equipped to have all the information that you're going to need to be a nurse in the United States. So again, thank you. I'm just going to share my screen and I'll, I'll be able to start. Okay. All righty. Okay. So. Again, thank you very much. I appreciate all of you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for uh, you know, taking time to better yourself. And I am privileged and humbled to be able to share this opportunity with you. I mean, um, uh, for me as a Christian, I know that to 
whom much is given, much is required. And so I hope that in this next hour, I'll be able to just be a blessing to each one of you. So who is Joyce? Like uh, Christine has um, introduced, I'm an author, I'm an advanced practicing nurse, a patient advocate, I'm a public speaker, a nurse educator, and a nurse coach. But I did not just get here. My story starts at the age of seven. At the age of seven, I lost my mom to a condition called preeclampsia, which is a hypertensive, um, a hypertensive crisis in expectant mothers. And she did not make it and she passed away. Being the second born of five children, I was forced into a caregiving role. At that time in my life, I didn't know where this was going. Uh, fast forward at the age of 30, I was married, had two children, and my husband got sick. And so I was forced into a caregiving role because I had to take care of him in the hospital. It was while taking care of him in the hospital that I, for the first time, realized, ooh, this is what nurses have to go through. This is what a caregiver has to go through. I learned a lot of skills while I was taking care of my husband. He was in a ward with 10 other, nine other patients. This nine patients plus my husband, 10 patients quickly became my patients because I had to go and see him every day. I learned how to wash them, feed them, turn them in their beds, everything that goes with caregiving. I also learned at that time that if you did not have medical experience or knowledge, it was very difficult to be a patient advocate. And so I was incapacitated in terms of what questions to ask the doctor. I did not know what I was going to ask about my, my, my husband's condition. I went with what the doctor said. My instinct told me that mistakes were being made. I saw a lot of mistakes being made. Some of them were really obvious. I remember one mistake that was obvious that was made. One time we were told to donate blood you know, for my patient. We donated blood and then I'm like, okay, why isn't he being given the blood transfusion? And I'm told the blood was stolen from the blood bank. Really, okay. So it was a harsh time, and uh, but I learned a lot. At that time, all I did, I was trying to make my patient survive. I was trying to help him. I didn't know what God was doing in the background. I didn't know that God was actually beginning to prepare me for what would later on be my purpose. So while towards the last times, uh, last days of my husband's life, he never made it. Um, he started telling me he felt that I had missed my calling. And I thought that may have been just because he looked at how I was taking care of him and the other patients. And he kept telling me, promise me that um, if you ever get a chance, you'd go back to school and you become a nurse or a doctor. I told him I wouldn't make such a promise because I wasn't sure. Uh, he also started telling me, I see you as a Florence Nightingale. I'd never heard of Florence Nightingale, never paid attention. Um, and so that stuck in my mind, but never paid too much attention to it. Well, he never made it, he passed away. Fast forward years later, I remarry and uh, I get remarried and I, 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 I come, I relocate to the United States. The very interesting thing was the first lady that I met when I came to the United States, who was my neighbor. She saw me and she was like, Joyce, you need to be a nurse. And I was like, is it written all over my face? You know, remember I had studied BCom. Uh, that's where we were with Christine. We went to Kenyatta University and studied BCom. I liked what I was doing. And I was not about to change my career at the age of 40. And I'm like, no, I'm not even going to go back to school. But at the back of my mind, I remember, you know, my husband kept nagging me and telling me, you missed your calling. And I was like, maybe I really did miss my calling. And I decided, let me give this a chance. And so I, I enrolled in nursing school. I went to nursing school. And I'm glad that I did, because if I didn't, I wouldn't be here today. But while in nursing school, I also had some unfinished business. One of the things was during one of my psych rotations, my dad, who had just retired back in Kenya, got sick. He went into a depression, you know, and um, if it were not for that psych rotation, I would not have been able to save my dad. But going through the psych rotation, I kind of knew what questions to talk to his doctor about, what to educate my mom about, how to take care of him. Long story short, my father recovered and he's still alive today. I come every year to, look, to, you know, to see him. And um, I'm just glad that I had that knowledge. That knowledge helped me to help him. Another thing I learned while I was in nursing school, when my late husband died, I had two children. One was five years old, one was six months old. So I didn't have time to mourn or to cry. 
And so I'm doing one of my, my clinical rotations and I'm my, one of my patients is a African-American guy. He's at the age of 32, which is the age my husband was when he passed away. And for the first time, instead of seeing this patient, I felt like I was seeing my late husband and I was able to finally have that closure. I felt sorry for the patient because I cried so much on him, but, and he also never made it. Um, but that allowed me to get uh, closure. So I finished nursing school. One of the beautiful things that I remembered about nursing school was because I had taken care of my husband when he was sick, learned the skills, I had the compassion naturally. And I was able to get the awards for best clinical students throughout my nursing um, in school. Um, so I finished nursing school and I started working as a nurse. My first posting was in what here in the United States we call step down ICU. It's just a breakdown from ICU. And uh, most of the patients there, because they are coming from surgery, they are critical. Um, we put them on prophylactic uh, um, um, caprin just to prevent them from getting blood clots. And so um, I started learning about pulmonary embolism. Um, why that became important to me was that I remember this is now when I'm working as a nurse. One time I'm taking my son to get his passport and he's reading the, um, the death certificate for my late husband. And he's like, mom, what is a PE? And I'm like, where did you read that? And he's like, on the death certificate. And for the first time, I just cried because it hit me that that is what my husband had passed away. Remember, my husband had been sick. I didn't know what you know, what had killed him. And so I was like, you know, this might show up in my children. So I was happy to get that information. Good news was I finally figured out what killed my husband. Bad news was, did I contribute to it? And so um, I was at that point where I was like, okay, I can either be mad at what was not done, or I can use this chance to better myself, to learn more about how to be a nurse, how to empower other nurses, how to make sure that caregivers are informed so that the more of us that are informed, the more of us in this career, the better it is or the better outcomes for our patients. And that's why I'm so passionate about empowering nurses. I'm passionate about giving us an opportunity. The United States, I know, has a lot of openings that are coming up for nurses. And I wanted to share this opportunity with you because I know it's going to make a difference for you. I don't know what your story is, but I know that each one of us has a story and I know that uh, you are going to be encouraged. So um, let's go on with this. Just a minute, I'm trying to, okay. All right. So um, I just want to show you a little bit about how nursing in the United States has changed my life. You know. Um, there's a saying that says a picture is worth a thousand words. So since being a nurse, the middle picture is where I first graduated from nursing school. That's been about 15 years ago. And then the beautiful thing about being a nurse here in the United States is most of your employers are going to send you back to school. They send you back to school, for, quote unquote, it's kind of free, but it's not free. You sign up a contract with them to work for them for two years. But I look at it like it's an advantage because you're being taken back to school and your job is guaranteed for two years. So you're taken back to school for your master's, for your PhD. I was able on the next picture, you see I've, 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 that I had just graduated with my, my uh, master's and now working on my PhD, all paid by my employer. And when you get back or after you achieve, you know, you, you, you graduate, you're remunerated for it. So it's a big uh, advantage for you, you know. This is another picture just showing you what being a nurse in the United States has done. And I just want to show you these pictures, not to boast or anything, but I want to encourage you. I want you to see what is available for you. I want you to see if I can do it, you can do it. So that's why I'm showing you this. I'm just showing you this to encourage you. I would never have been able to afford such a house in Kenya, but being a nurse in the United States, you make enough money that you are able to stay in a home like this. So I just want to show you that just to encourage you. Um, wearing the same dress you have on now. Yes, actually, I just took this picture about 30 minutes ago for the oh, presentation. Just... I didn't want anybody to think it's photo shoot or anything. This is that house. This is where I'm talking to you from. So 
I'm telling you something that is real, you know, so I just want to encourage you. I want you to, re to feel that if I can do it, you can do it. Okay. Um, being a nurse has also enabled me to become an author. One of the things is after my experience, I wanted to find out, to share my story because I felt like, for example, a lot of mistakes were made when my husband was sick in the hospital. One of my desires is one day to come and actually educate nurses, caregivers, doctors. There are mistakes that are being made that do not need to be made. And if more of us are empowered, we can together put our voices together and we can say, no, this can be done better. I've shared, uh, that's my book, Caregiving the Momentum of a Decision. Um, here it is, and it, you can find it on Amazon. I just share my story. I also share some tips on how to be a nurse and where I started and how I've, where I have gotten today. So that book can be found on Amazon. I've also co-authored a book, Wealth Footprints, uh, with some friends of mine, Christine is one of the authors in uh, also in that um, wealth footprints. So I've been able to do all this because of what you are paid as a nurse in the United States. And that's why I want all of you to take advantage of this opportunity. There is enough for all of us. There is enough for all of us. So in the next few minutes, kindly just pay attention. I'm going to run you through the steps right from the beginning and uh, um, have a pen and paper and just grab as much information as you can, okay? So why am I doing this? I've already told you much of what that is, but my desire is to empower more African nurses. I want more of us, I want more of us, I want more of us. Can you imagine, the, say the, the, the nurses um, in the diaspora, sent the most money back home every year because they have it. So can you imagine how many households we are changing? And if I can get 100, 200, 1,000 of you to come, how much more will we be able to do? So who is this opportunity for? I know there's different people who've logged in, different age groups. I want to first of all talk to my, those who feel like they've retired 60 and over, and you're wondering, is this opportunity even for me? Yes, it is. And let me tell you how it is for you. You might be 60, you might be 65, you've just retired, you've been a nurse for many years, you've put in everything. And you're like, I thought after doing all of this, I was going to have some little money, have built my house. What? You were not built to be taking care of chicken and sheep. You have too much information to waste going to take care of sheep and goats. When there are people, sick people every day who still need you. So if you're my 60, my 60 and over uh, nurses, who you're like, will I really make it? Yes, you can make it. And this is the beauty of it. After you come to the United States, you will do a contract with the employer that brings you. You work for them for two years. After the two years, you get a green card to be an American. And on top of that, you can now change and move to another job, an easier job, because you're 60 years old, you've been doing this for a long time, you're burnt out, but you can actually do a job, a travel nurse. As a travel nurse, you can travel to any state in the United States, look for the exotic states, go to California, beautiful state where you know I'll enjoy. And all you do is you work three days. The other days you're having fun, you're enjoying having that retirement that you never thought you could do. And as a travel nurse, you'll also just work maybe three months, the next two months you're in Kenya, you come back, you work another three months, you go back to Kenya, you can actually shuttle back and forth. You can actually be able to build those things that you thought you would build. Because when you retire, they probably give you maybe two to five million. You can't sustain that. That is money that you're going to be able to make here in one year. So my retirees, I hope you're hearing me. There is, if you're a middle-aged nurse, um, you're probably thinking like, um, I'm working, there is no, I mean, you, you know that you, you have the skill, you know that you have um, uh, your specialization and you're wondering, there are no opportunities here. Yes. If you came to the United States, the opportunities are endless. You can work from being a, a, a pediatric nurse. If you like old people, geriatric nurse, if you like um, dialysis, you can be in dialysis. 
You can even go ahead, go back to school and become a nurse practitioner. You can actually open even your own home health um, uh, agency and be taking care of older people, younger people, special needs. So the opportunities are endless. So if you are a middle-aged person, you've been working, you're wondering, you know, I think there is more. Yes, there is more. And this opportunity is for you. My younger people, if you're just in school, you're just graduating, you're about to graduate and you're wondering um, what is there for me in Kenya? We are hearing you graduate and you don't have a job. You get a job, you're being paid 10,000 Kenya shillings. And you're wondering for all this schooling that I've gone through, there is opportunity for you. Right now, for you to come to the United States, all you need is the two years experience. Let me tell you how you get the two years. When you finish nursing school, you work as an intern for one year. That one year is counted. So that's your first year of the experience. And then you add a second year, make sure it's in a critical care hospital, a level five hospital, so that you get the experience. While you're working, while you're doing your internship, please, please, please talk to your matrons, talk to your bosses, be that nurse who can be given a good reference. Your references. You're going to need a reference, at least five references. So start collecting those references while you are working. So your two years, the first year, your internship is counted, and then you need one year experience. That's not a long time, because as you're preparing for this, as you'll see as I continue with the presentation, that one year is going to have elapsed. So during this one year, you can actually start preparing, you can start being proactive, you can start preparing for your NCLEX, you can start putting your paperwork together. So let me not go ahead of myself. So in a nutshell, as a nurse, you must learn to be creative with your license. You've worked so hard to get this license. Please get it to use. Let it pay you back because we work so hard. As caregivers, nobody ever tells us thank you. You clean people's baths, you're there, you encourage them, you hold their hands when they are, you know, when they are dying, when they are suffering, when they are in pain. Somebody needs to pay you for the work that you do. And if nobody has told you thank you, I want to tell you thank you. I'm so proud of what you do. So nurses are in demand. There is a demand for nurses. These are the statistics, you can Google them. So you will prove that what I'm telling you is right because this, this is all over. If you go to Google, you'll see this. According to the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, the AACN, the US will experience a shortage of registered nurses between 2020 and 2040 as baby boomers age and the need for healthcare grows. COVID-19 pandemics have made this shortage even worse. Basically what happens here, a lot of the Americans who are born here don't want to do the nursing jobs. So you're finding in most of the hospitals, we have the elderly people, they are 70, we have nurses who are 65 and over. Here a nurse can work up to 90, as long as you have the strength, nobody stops you because there's a shortage. But after COVID-19, a lot of them did not want to go back to the hospitals because of their immunity. So what was already going to be a crisis has been made worse by the pandemic. So if you, um, that even just means that there is more demand, there's more opening for nurses. So that's why we are having this uh, talk today because um, there is a job market for you. So who qualifies? Um, like I said before, you need to have two years of experience. If you're a new nurse, your first year is going to be your internship and then you need another year. If you're already a seasoned nurse, you need to have worked for two years, two years of experience. So um, you need to be from an English speaking country. Kenya is an English speaking country, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi. I saw somebody from Zambia. I saw somebody from Ghana. So as long as it's an English speaking country, that country qualifies. They qualify to be able to work, come and work as a nurse. You need to have gotten your nursing degree from an English speaking nursing program. That just means if your country is English speaking, it means that nursing program was from English. I mean, from an English uh, speaking uh, country. So if you say your, your English degree was done in Germany, that won't work. Oh, okay, <laughs> I just want to clarify the English speak. It has to be from an English speaking program. They're very specific about that. And they're speaking specific about that because English is the uh, language that they use in the hospitals here in the United States. So make sure your, your degree or your nursing degree has been done in an English speaking country. Make sure you have had a four year 
degree four years it, it has to be a, a four-year course i know in kenya they have some two-year courses those ones don't qualify uh, but the four-year course that could be a bsn or an, an advanced diploma in nursing so it has to have to be a four-year degree okay i hope you're clear on that part uh, uh, so yeah where okay we'll the next one okay so where do we start where do we start uh you're a nurse in kenya you're wondering where do you start your first place to start would be to find an agency that is recruiting you want to find a recruiting agency and i've put a number of them out here um we have avant we have kennedy we have interstaff medpro sheer water Oh, great. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of it. I just want to go there. The next one. Okay, yeah. Oh, uh, Grady Payton, uh, Global Nursing, ADEX, and International MedLink. Okay, so those, there are more agencies. There are more agencies. So these are just a few that I wanted you to know. Um, I would recommend Avant. A lot of nurses that have come here have used Avant. A lot of uh, nurses have also used Kennedy. Uh, a lot of nurses have used MedPro. A lot of nurses have used Ogrady Payton. And so I want to recommend those just because those I've talked to nurses who've come here using those agencies. And those agencies offer um, a better package. Um, but you want to work with an agency that is going to give you good packages and in the next slide i'm going to be talking about what you need uh, to ask the agency when you register for them most of these agencies what you need to do just go online go to their website and just click they most of them usually just have a questionnaire that you fill and then they get in touch with you when you are starting remember you're the one who wants the offer don't give up too quickly be aggressive okay so if you try say oh grady payton and they are not responding to you Send another one to uh, send another one to Avant. Go to Kennedy's. Go to International Medlink. Use as many as possible, and that way you'll also be able to compare who is giving you the best offer. I just want you to remember at this point that this whole process, from the time that you start working with the agency until you come to the United States, takes about one to two and a half years. A lot of it depends on you. If your paperwork is done well, if you know what to do your work, uh, I mean, your, your stage is going to move faster, okay? Excuse me, let me drink some water. So a lot of it depends on you. So it would be important for you to know what is required of you, and then that way you're able to move faster, okay? So what do you want the agencies to offer you? When you're looking for these agencies, one of the things you need to look for is find an agency that is going to pay your CGFNS fee, and we're going to talk about that later. <clears throat> Find an agency that is going to pay for your NCLEX preparation and testing fee. You want an agency that is going to pay for your visa fee to the testing location. Remember, we do not have a testing site in Kenya. I know um, there's been word going around, oh, there's a testing center coming in Kenya. Um, so far to my knowledge, that is not true, okay? So we don't have a testing center in Kenya. I don't think there's any coming soon. There may be, but at least in this year, mm, it's a long shot. So you want an agency that is going to pay for you, uh, uh, your visa fee for to the testing location, that's the visa. It's either going to be in India or South Africa. Uh, and then you want one that is going to pay for you the flight and accommodation to India and South Africa. You want an agency that will pay for you your immigration, immigration processing fee, your medical fee, uh, interview with your, who will organize an interview with your potential employer, who will pay for you your flight to the United States, who will pay for you your accommodation before you settle, will help you find an apartment, will help you secure a job, will have a welcome package for you, and will do for you training and orientation. Now, do all the agencies offer all this? The answer is no, but you want the agency that is going to give you the most. The process is expensive, very expensive. Is it doable? Yes. So you want to negotiate for the best terms. That's why it is important to make sure you put down this. I hope you guys are writing, taking some notes. 
because this is going to be helpful to you, okay? Another thing you need to do when you're looking for the agency to work with, you want to ensure the website of the, uh, you want to ensure you check the website of the agency to see what they are offering and also those who have gone through the process. So get in touch with the people who've already gone ahead of you. Like I've told you, most of them have gone with Avant, Kennedy's, um, or, or, you know, the ones I mentioned, I can't even remember them now. <laughs> All right. So what do you need to have ready? So you're a person who is thinking about um, moving to the United States and you're like, where do I start? You've already identified the agency. Now, before you, as you start, uh, uh, you identify the agency, but before you even start engaging with the agency, make sure you have your curriculum VATA CV ready. Here we call it a resume. You want to have that ready. You want to have a professional CV. Find somebody who can do for you a professional CV, okay? At the end of this presentation, um, Christine is going to uh, talk to you about uh, offering people who, we are, who are interested in working with us. And part of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be helping you put some of these things together. So you want to have a well done CV. You want to have references. Remember I mentioned that you're going to need at least five, five or six references. I would recommend have at least eight. Let this be people that you have talked to so that when you call them on short notice and you tell them, I want a reference, they can write for you the reference for you. I would go ahead and give them some information about yourself so that they know what they are writing for you in the reference. Some of these organizations are going to send the reference directly to them. So somebody is not going to write something about you if they don't know who you are or the information. Give them information about what you want them to talk about, talk about you. Okay, so give them that information well in advance, because when this process starts unfolding, sometimes things go fast. You don't want something to be stuck because you didn't have a reference. Okay, you also want to make sure you have done your, uh, your English tests. That's your TOEFL. The TOEFL is the American English. Uh, I mean, the, it's more American. Um, I would recommend uh, study the TOEFL but I would recommend you to do the ILETS just because the International English Language Testing System is more British and Kenya is a, was colonized by the British. So we are more British inclined to British. It's an easier test to pass, okay? At the end of the day, one of the tests is going to be needed. I would go with the one that is easier. The ILETS is easier for you to pass. The TOEFL is going to help you when you're now doing the NCLEX because the American English is a little different. So I would study one and do the other one, uh, prepare in the other one to pass the exam. Um, part of the information you can get about it, like ILETS, go to the British Council, the library. They have information about that. There's a lot of information online. So you can get that and you can prepare with that. Uh, you can use that to prepare for that exam. You remember that scandal there was about the Nazis who wanted to go to Britain who could not pass the English test? Kenyans, we know English. Let's be more confident but take your time to study. If you take your time to study, don't underestimate it and think, oh, it's an easy exam. Take time to study it, go through it, you'll pass. What they are testing you in, they are testing you in your listening, they're testing you in your speaking and in your writing. We are very good in writing compositions. Speaking, you want to be articulate in the way you're speaking, pronouncing your words, listening. Can you listen to something and answer questions from it? So it's a very easy um, test but you need to put in, practice it, do a lot of uh, practice on it and you'll be able to pass it. How much does it cost to do it? The package for registration and the test costs about 26,000 Kenya shillings. The class and preparation costs about 10,000 Kenya shillings. So you're looking at about 36,000 Kenya shillings, both for preparation and for the testing. You can cut that 10,000 Kenya shillings by just getting information online, going to the British library and getting the information about those tests. They have some books there in the library that you can read and you prepare. That's what the nurses who've done it told me they did and it helped them. In each of these, you need to score seven and above. In other words, you need to score seven and above in English, seven and above in speaking, seven and above in writing. So make sure you're um, preparing on all of the levels, the listening, the speaking, the writing so that you pass that exam. You're going to need that. I think it is good for two years. So you want to do it not you know, closer to the time that you're preparing your things so that it's still uh, considered valid for the preparations that you need for coming to the United States, okay? 
Then your next stage after you've prepared for your English, and you can decide how, what order to do these things. Um, document ver verification. So the first step is for you to get your transcripts and nursing certificate from your, from your nursing school. <clears throat> In other words, you're going to need, um, excuse me, let me just drink some water. <clears throat> you're going to need to go to the nursing school that you went to and get your transcripts and your nursing certificate, okay? That process may cost you five to 10,000 Kenya shillings. Go there by yourself so that you talk to, you know, you know the school you went to and you make sure that you get it on time. Sending people sometimes makes it longer. Just take time, take uh, a day off or whatever, go there, make sure you have your transcript and your nursing certificate. Once you have it, again, make a trip to the nursing, the, sorry, <laughs> my Lua is coming out. Make, a, a, I mean, a trip to the nursing council of Kenya. So go to NCK for them to verify the certificates. That process costs you 20,000 Kenya shillings, okay? Again, you want to go to NCK by yourself. Stop calling them, they're not going to pick up your phone, okay? Stop sending messages. You people are in Kenya, you know how that works. Just go there and that will make your work easier and faster. After you, the, that certificate has been verified by NCK, then you want to send it to CGFNS. CGFNS is going to be a very, very important body for you. And that is the Commission on Graduates of Foreign Nursing Schools. This is the body that verifies all the certificates of any nurse who wants to work abroad. And in this case, in the United States. So the GFNS is going to be a very, very important body. And let's talk more about it. So please, please write down this, write down this. I can't say this any further, any better than this. Document verification is going to be very key. Get your transcripts from your school, send them to the National Council of Kenya, and then have them sent to CGFNS. <clears throat> when you're sending them to CGFNS, you want to send them by DHL. You want to send them by DHL. Remember, these are your certificates. They cannot get lost, okay? CGFNS, the whole verification process takes you three to five months. One thing about the American bodies, you cannot hurry them. So some of these things you want to do them quick in advance, because if you already know it's going to take three to five months, you want to send that early so that you know the three to five months is factored in your preparation. It is going to cost you $390. That's around 40,000 Kenya shillings. Plus you need an extra 20 for posting them by DHL, okay? So you need to get those, uh, um, your certifications early. One thing about the, uh, the CGFNS, once you sent your papers there, they are not only going to verify, they are verifying whether what school you went to, they are verifying whether that nursing program was, an, is an, was done in an English language. They are verifying whether the, uh, the course that you did is valid and that you, got, you have all the competence that is needed for you to work in the United States. It's also the GCFNS that is going to give you the authorization to test. The authorization to test is what you need for you to study for the, to, to take the NCLEX exam, which is the licensing exam to be able to work in the United States. Some of the uh, states that are going to, uh, where you're going to work in the United States may want you to do an exam with the CGFNS. Some states expect it, some states don't expect it. I would go ahead and just do that exam. So once you send them your certificates for verification, they're going to ask you, do you want to do the qualifying exam? I would go ahead and do that qualifying exam so you have it because you're not sure which state you're going to go to. So you want to have that in advance so that if the state that you, you're sent to needs that as part of the credentials that you need, you already have it, okay? Then as I said, the CGFNS is going to give you the authorization to test the, AAT, the ATT for the NCLEX exam. 
Okay, so before you can do the NCLEX exam, you need to have sent your certificates for verification. You need to now be given the authorization to test for the NCLEX. Now, the authorization to test is only valid for four months. Okay, so remember CGFNS, that role takes three to five months to clear. And then you have four months that once you get the, your authorization to test, you only have four months where it's valid. If it goes over four months, you're going to have to start the process afresh. That means you're going to have to send them the certificates again, verify again, and then get another authorization to test. So just watch the times. So it, it's valid for four months, okay? So you want to be sending these certificates or when you're already ready to prepare for the, you know, to start studying for the exam, you've already got the agency you're working for. So your paperwork is, is already, you know, in the process before you now um, uh, send for the, send your paperwork to CDFNS to get your authorization to test. Another thing I want you to remember is the CGFNS certificate must be included in every visa or green card petition filed on the nurse's behalf by the US employer, okay? So you need that certificate from CGFNS to attach it to your visa petition. If it, whether you're going to be doing it by yourself or you, the employer is going to be doing it for you, it must be attached. If the employer, um, if the um, immigration people don't see that, they won't even process your paperwork. So make sure you have that certificate with you, okay? So I hope, they have, I, hope I have drummed the CGFNS part very clearly because that's where a lot of nurses usually uh, are stuck because they don't know the clarification about that. And if there are any questions, I'll be able to answer that again at the end of it, okay. All right, let me take a short point and then I'm going to come back and talk about NCLEX um, so that uh, Christine, if you can take Premier, over. Yeah, I think you better take a break. That has been a lot of information. Maybe this would be a good time for you to sip a glass of water or something. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you're finding this useful. I have noted a few questions in the chat and I'm putting them aside so that then we will answer all of them at the end of the presentation. There has been a technical mishap our participants have been capped at 100, which is unfortunate because my account allows 1,000 participants, but for some reason, we're not able to log in more than 100. I'm trying to get in touch with customer care for Zoom, even as we are on the meeting. But I think uh, we make the best of the situation we have. We will work with the 100 participants that we have, but it's very unfortunate because we expected a lot of other people, but that is fine. Maybe it's the benefit of logging in early. So I think uh, we will just continue with those that we have. I had mentioned already at the beginning, if you had not already logged in when I, when I made the introduction, I said, my name is Christine Muetelli and I am the host of this event. Uh, Joyce is my good friend. And as you can see, she has a lot of information that she very willingly shares with those of us who may have dreams of relocating to the US or those who may have relatives or family members who want to do the same and pursue a nursing career. It's very generous of you, Joyce, to want to, to be able to share your information and to share your blessing with other people. Uh, now, as Joyce is taking a break, I just wanted to let you all know if you are not already logged in when I say this, that we are from today's uh, meeting, we are launching a WhatsApp group, we are joining all of you in a WhatsApp group, where we will continue to share this information and uh, answer any questions that you have. I'm going to give details of that at the end of the presentation. But if you want to be in that WhatsApp group, if you want to be in our Facebook group, uh, I would like you to then share in the chat I want you to share your name, your email address, and your WhatsApp contact. Please make sure that you put your country code when you give us the, the your when you give us the WhatsApp number. Yes, if you're giving us your WhatsApp number, make sure that you put your country code there. Because if you give me a 07 or a 08, I will not know which country that is. So start with the 254, 256 uh, and all of that. Give me the country code from which you are because we already have people here from different, different countries. So let me have your number. Then we will be able to add you on the WhatsApp group. We'll be able to add you on the Facebook group. And we are going to be getting in touch with you. I see already some questions are there. 
We are going to be answering those questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, Joyce, I don't know if you're ready to continue. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Then All right. So now that we've already sent our certificates for verification, the next and most important thing is for us to pass the license exam. The National Council License Examination, NCLEX, is a nationwide examination for the licensing of nurses in the United States. In other words, if you ever want to work in the United States, you must pass the NCLEX exam, okay? You must pass the NCLEX exam. What is the NCLEX exam? NCLEX uses what is called a computerized adaptive testing, CAT. And um, I'm just going to give you an example of what that is. Basically, as a nurse, you should not even freak out about passing NCLEX because you have the content, you have the information. And basically, they are just testing your competence. They're testing your competence and they test it in levels. Like if you pass this level, then the next question is going to be slightly harder. For example, if they were testing you on a question um, on blood transfusion, the first question that I would ask you on blood transfusion is if you were going to transfuse somebody with blood, what are the things that you need to have in place? That kind of question would be a select all that apply. Your, the, what you're, the things you're going to be uh, selecting would be you'd have to make sure that you, the, you have consent from the patient. You're going to have to ensure that you have two verifiers. You have two nurses that are going to verify, is this the patient? Is this their, is this their blood group to make sure the blood is compatible? All of that information, they are verifying the information about the patient, their allergies and all that. The next thing you're going to take their vitals, make sure you, you check their vitals because we have to take vitals at the beginning of a blood transfusion. So those are the questions that you're going to be asked at the beginning, that would be the basic question. Now, if you answered that question right, the next level of question they are going to ask you is, a person is being given blood, they start having shivers, shortness of breath, what could be having, what could be happening? Basically, the patient is having an allergic reaction, and so we need to know what are we going to do in the, uh, the, uh, when the patient is having an allergic reaction. Of course, we are going to stop giving the blood, we are going to have to send all the, the tubings and the blood back to the blood bank, and all that so that you as you can see it builds up so first of all you know you're transfusing blood this is what you need to have then now as you're transfusing the blood they're having an allergic reaction this is what the treatment so those are how the NCLEX questions go they built up on your competencies that's what is called the uh, the computerized adaptive testing the computer will kind of be analyzing are you able to answer this question? If you answer it, then they give you a more technical one. Then they give you a more advanced one like that. And it's on the different topics. Um, I would encourage you to please, please, please invest in getting the best books, getting the best coaching to pass the NCLEX exam, because this is your passport. If you don't uh, pass the NCLEX exam, you cannot be able to come and work as a nurse in the United States. So how do you prepare for the NCLEX? Um, you can use uh, review books. There are different books, NCLEX books that have been shown, um, like this one. Is everyone able to see my screen? Can you see the one I'm lifting up? <laughs> you could stop sharing. Oh, stop. Uh, uh, Maybe you want to stop sharing for a minute so that then, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank so, you. like this one. Yeah. So, that's one of the books. Okay. All right, so you can use online classes. We have different people who offer NCLEX exams. You can go online. Um, for those of you who will choose to work with us at the end of this, we are going to be offering that. So we'll show you what you can use. Um, they are offline classes. They have people who just have classrooms where they are offering. I think there is a few in Kenya. I'm not sure where, but once I can get that information, I'll be able to, and if the, anybody who is attending this, if you know any, share so that we can share this information with each other. You can use coaching. You, in that case, you need, you have a coach and somebody can walk you through, tell you what areas to work on, or you can have a mentor, somebody who literally holds your hand and tells you this is how to study, um, you're accountable to them and all that. The NCLEX exam itself, at this time costs two hundred dollars. That's twenty thousand Kenya shillings. That might change. Okay, you need another twenty thousand for the preparation. Like I said, you either going to buy the book or they have online courses. You know, there are different online courses. You want to see the one that is user friendly with your pocket. But again, like I said, this is the one thing that you have to get right. You want to 
um, pass the NCLEX on the first attempt. Because when you don't pass it on the first attempt, I've seen many people get scared and get nervous. And so even though they could have passed it on the second and third attempt because they are so anxious and nervous, they fail it. But when they pass it on the first attempt, it's better. So you want to really prepare yourself fully so that when you're going uh, for that uh, exam, you are well prepared for it, okay? The testing locations, like I had mentioned, Currently, we do not have a testing location in Kenya. We do not have a testing location in Kenya. So anybody telling you, oh, there's this test, uh, this place where you can do the test in Kenya, they're not telling you the truth. We do not have one. And once there is one, we will let you know, okay? So right now, for anybody in Africa, the places that you want to go and test are India or South Africa. You can also go and test in Europe, but for me, instead of that money you're using to get the visa to Europe, save that money so you can use it to get your visa to the United States. Um, India is preferred by most of the recruiting agencies because the flights to India are cheaper and getting the visa to India is easier. You just go online uh, to their website and they'll give you the visa. You pay for it and they send you the visa. So the visa to India is way, way much cheaper. The other thing about India uh, is that um, the hotel and accommodation is going to be cheaper. So the flight is cheap, is cheap, is cheap and um, the, is, uh, not cheap, but I mean cheaper, <laughs> but, and, and the accommodation is cheaper. So with 100,000 Kenya shillings, you'd be able to get your flight and four days. You want to go for at least four days because there's that day that you're going to travel. The next day you want to kind of uh, prepare and then day number three, do your NCLEX exam, and then day number four, come back. So at least you want four days. You don't want to just go, you're paying two days. Uh, some of the nurses have said that one of the things that was their undoing was they, they thought the four days was too expensive. They went for uh, two days and they failed because they were tired. You do not want to go into this exam when you're tired. You want to go to this exam when you're refreshed, when you're able to think. Remember, it's a critical thinking exam. So you want to go into it when you're, you're, you're fresh, you're articulate, you can critically think, okay? Um, your other uh, option is South Africa. South Africa is more expensive. The flights are more expensive. The hotels are more expensive. The food is more expensive. So again, because at the end of the day, this whole package is a lot. You want to, where you can cut costs, I would recommend that you do that. So your testing centers are going to be India or South Africa or the UK. The UK, again, like is a long shot, I would just go for India or South Africa. Visa requirements, okay? Uh, so for <clears throat> non-US citizens are required to have an employer-sponsored visa to work in the United States. What does that mean? That means you're going to need an employer to sponsor you for your visa, your work visa. Um, the recruitment agencies work as an employer. So you'll find that, um, and that's why I would advise you to use a recruitment agency, because when you use the, the recruitment agency, the recruitment agency works as your employer, and that's why they can sponsor you for the visa. If you decide not to work with an, um, an agency, make sure that the, 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 the hospital that chooses to um, uh, work with you um, sponsors you for your visa. So they are going to have to sponsor you for the visa. Uh, there are a number of hospitals right now because of the shortage, a number of hospitals are doing that direct getting of, of, um, of nurses and they are doing, they are uh, sponsoring you for that. But you have to be the one who knows what paperwork you're going to need to put together for them so that they can, um, they can um, sponsor you. So again, use the, uh, the recruitment agency or directly make sure you're telling the employer to do the sponsorship for you. Okay, um, and what uh, the uh, recruitment agency or the employer is going to do is they are going to apply for you what is called a permanent work visa. They're going to be applying for a permanent work visa. This permanent work visa will be converted into a green card, okay? So it's a conditional visa for two years. Kenyans, Kenyans, my fellow Kenyans, I know some nurses have come here and made some mistakes that were not even worth making. This two years is a short time. Remember the visa is attached to that employer. If you breach the visa, you, get, you breach your green card. The, your green card is canceled. So please, please, please 
if you've already signed the contract and you're working for that employer, persevere for those two years. Two years is a short time. After the two years, you'll now get your permanent green card or your permanent residence. And now you can move to another employer who is going to be, you know, whoever you want to or move to the state that you want to move to. But do not breach that contract. So remember, it's an employer sponsored visa. It's a permanent work visa, which converts to a green card after two years. So after two years, you're going to apply for a permanent residency. The conditions are going to be removed, the conditions for the two year condition. And then now you can have the permanent residency. This is an opportunity for you to come to the United States and be an American citizen. Don't be in a hurry and screw it up, okay? Just be patient for the two years that you're working with that employer, they are the ones who have brought you here, give them their due diligence. And after that, you're free, you have a permanent residence and you can stay in the United States. There's also another one, uh, you can also get it through what is called an H-1B visa. But the H-1B visa is only for nursing specialty areas in undeserved areas, okay? So there's the H-1B visa. Right now, I know where they're doing H-1B visa might be for those nurses who are coming to do like hemodialysis. But what is going to happen is they're going to take you to a, an extremely remote area, okay? Um, for a starter, you probably may not want that, but if that is what is available, go for it. But I would try the others before I opt for that, okay? So I hope we are clear on the visas of the visa requirement and immigration, okay? So this whole process takes four to six months, the whole process for immigration. This is only immigration. It takes four to six months. You only apply for uh, the immigration after you have got your authorization to take the NCLEX, okay? So you need to have taken the NCLEX exam, not even the authorization, sorry, after you have passed the NCLEX exam. So after you've passed the NCLEX exam, that's when you can go ahead and apply for your visa. Because remember, the CGFNS is going to have to give you that certificate, which you use, which is used for, uh, for now applying for your visa. And that certificate has to show you have your English test and you have your N NCLEX exam done and passed before you can apply for your visa. So the visa takes four to six months. Most of the recruiting agencies are only going to file for you. They'll pay, I mean, they're going to file for you and your dependents, but um, it is, in most cases, most of the agencies might pay only for you, the nurse. So you need to have money for your dependents, okay? Filing for one person is $345. So it's $345 per person, per person. All right, who are dependents? I've had some nurses who've said they've gone to the agency and um, you know <laughs> it just became a big problem and they were delayed because of um, not having the right paperwork for your dependents. So your dependents include your children. Make sure you have the birth certificate for your child. Now, if you're a single parent, single father, single mother, please talk to the other parent. The other parent must give clearance for the child. The other parent must give clearance for the child. In other words, at the embassy, they are going to need their identification card for the other parent, a letter from a lawyer showing that they have accepted that you, the parent who has the child, can travel with the child. If you don't go with that right paperwork, your visa is going to be delayed. So make sure you go have the right paperwork for your children. Your spouse. It has to be a valid marriage certificate, valid marriage certificate. We are talking America here. Please, please, please don't get, uh, you know, valid marriage certificate. If you've been married to two, three, four people, I don't know, however, whichever way, get the right one. This is the person, this is the right marriage certificate. You don't want to go there and then again, you're being delayed. Now, the spouse that you're going with to the embassy, please make sure you've already done a background, a police clearance check on them. Everyone, both your children and your spouse who are above 16 years old must have the police clearance. Some nurses have been delayed because they went there and the spouse, they found something on their background check. Maybe they were on drugs, maybe they had a criminal case somewhere. As long as there is something 
about drugs, about criminal cases on your background, you will not be given the visa. Okay, so please clear all of that before you go. If you're not sure of your spouse or they are not telling you the truth, carry yourself there by yourself. You worked hard for this nursing thing for yourself and your children. So clarify, if the person is not willing, they are not telling you all the information, you don't want to get shocks and surprises when you go to the embassy, okay? I hope I've drummed that in completely. Have your passport prepared in advance. Your passport needs to be, if it's expiring in a year, you're already late, get a new passport. So make sure you have a passport at least five, 10 years before it expires. You need a passport that is in right standing, right order, okay? I've talked about the police clearance, okay? Then the next thing is immunizations. You're going to need a lot of immunizations to be done for you. What you need to do is go to the CDC website and then see what immunizations are needed. There are so many, I couldn't come up with them, but um, you know, if anybody is interested, we'll be as you text us and all that, we'll be able to kind of give you a list. I, I didn't get to that part of working on the list of what immunizations you need, but that I can avail that to you. You also need uh, your the medical process is going to cost you between sixty and a hundred thousand Kenya shillings. That's why I'm advising you to do your immunizations in advance, so that by the time you're going to IOM, which is the International Organization for Immigration, they are the only doctors who do your medical. Uh, process. Um, if you already have your immunizations, and when you get the immunizations, let them give you the immunization card. If they've given you immunization for, you know, whatever, small chicken pox, whatever, just make sure you have it. Make sure you have your COVID test. You must have had two COVID vaccines, two COVID vaccines, first and second. So you must have that. That's not even negotiable. So make sure you have you have your COVID vaccines and all the other vaccinations that is needed for you. Um, and again, the website will have that. I did not take. I didn't uh, have time to put that together for you. But I mean, if somebody needs it, we'll, we can always help them. So for your visa and your immigration process, just have a checklist so that you know this is what I need. This is what I need. This is how much I need. If you have that, then you're able to check off as you process as you do the processing of that information. Placement interviews. So once you've passed your NCLEX exam, once you've been uh, given uh, the date for the visa, by the way, by the time you apply for the visa, like I said, it takes, um, it takes uh, three to six months. Uh, while you're still waiting, they are going to give you a tracking uh, number. So you'll be able to go to the website and just check the American embassy website and you check because you have your tracking number. So you'll be able to track and see when your interview is due and they, they kind of post them every week. They update them every week. So you're able to track it as, as long as you have the tracking number. But while that is going on, you need to start now um, identifying uh, uh, em uh, employers, potential employers. Some of the agencies do it for you, but I would rather you also go to you know look and start identifying some of them for yourself. Like I said, this is for you. So don't let, don't um, leave everything to the agency. You have to be proactive because you're the one who wants this, okay? So some agencies are going to do for you those placement interviews, some are not. And you can uh, uh, check some of those websites by yourself and see um, what jobs are available. Once they interview you, you will know whether they've given you the offer in 24 hours. So if after 24 hours you have not heard for them, from them, it means you didn't make it. Go ahead and interview with the next person. You want to do as many as possible because the more you do, the better your chances. After 24 hours, there's no response. You know, you haven't got that one. Go ahead and do the next one. You need preparation for the interviews. Americans interview differently. And again, like I said, those of you who are going to choose to work with us, we will prepare you for the interview. We will tell you what you need to do to get ready for these interviews, okay? So you need to know how to interview. It's very, very important. You don't want to miss the opportunity. You have your NCLEX, uh, you know, you've passed your NCLEX and then you miss the opportunity because you interviewed wrongly. So you want to be able to interview in the correct way, okay? And then another thing I want you to remember, remember at this point, you just want an employer so you can relocate. So don't be too choosy, you know, like I said, the contract employer is two years, so, don't be too choosy about it. If the first one that engages you, go ahead with them and just grab the opportunity. Okay. Find a registered nursing position. So 
like I said earlier, you can work with an agency or you can work directly by yourself. Sometimes you can just find an employer. If you find the employer, they will agree to sponsor you. So um, it depends on what you choose. For the agency, if those of you who choose to work with an, uh, a, a recruiting agency, you want to go to their website and you want to make sure that they have a seal on it. It's going to be a certified ethical recruiter seal. Make sure there is a certified ethical recruiter seal on their website. So it's only those recruiters who have that seal who are actually allowed or are recruiting legally. Just like in Africa, they say, oh, everybody's corrupt in Africa. Same here, they are crooks. So you want to get the right recruiter. You don't want to be work working with the wrong recruiters, okay? So the recruiters can also act as your US-based employer. I already said that the recruiter will be your US, uh, will be your the employer who is sponsoring you, or the employer that you get will be the person who sponsors you. Okay. So I've put here a list of sites of nursing jobs, and you can go online and look into this uh, nurse.com, nursejungle.com, onward healthcare, RNs wanted, nurse finders. Health Job Plus, Diversity Nursing, Campus RN, um, Nurse MP. So this is just a few of them. But again, like I said, there is a lot of information online. So if you go, you'll be able to get that information. Okay. So what, what to expect once you get to the United States? So once you've got your visa, um, you're ready to go. Remember I told you, you want to work with a recruiter who is going to do most of the things for you. If your recruiter is the kind who is going to pay for you, your, your flight ticket, you're good. And even for that, they usually only pay your flight. They will not pay the flight for your um, dependents. So they are only going to pay your flight. So even as you're thinking about it, remember it's your flight, they are going to pay. So if you're coming with your children, with your spouse, you have to pay for them. I would recommend coming by yourself fast, just because this is a new experience and um, you want to settle down before you bring you know, your child or your spouse. But again, it's up to you. That's just me recommending from the nurses that I have talked to and knowing how the situation is here, I would suggest um, you, know, you come, especially if you don't have somebody here, I would suggest you come fast, settle down, and then you can either, your spouse and child, children can come later, you know, but again, that's just a, a, a suggestion. So once, what to expect when you first come, once you're coming, crossing through the border, you are going to ask about your social security number. Why is that important? You cannot operate in the United States without your social security number, okay? So once you cross at the border, you're going to show them your passport. It has the visa. The next, your next question to ask them is, when will I get my social security number? They will tell you two things. They will either give it to you there or they will tell you it will be mailed in two or three weeks. So you want to wait for it. You want to look out for it. It comes in an envelope, just like local mail. It's very easy to miss it. You want to give them an address, the right address, because they are just going to mail it. You can't afford to lose it, okay? So you want to give them the right address that you know it's going to be secure. Some people have lost their social security numbers because it never got to them. It has delayed their whole process. The second thing, driver's license. Before you leave Kenya, please, please, please make sure you have gone to a driving school. Make sure you know how to drive. You're going to need to take yourself around. There are certain states you might go to where they have trains, um, they have buses, but again, it's not many of the states. Most of them, you have to drive yourself. One of the things you can do, go and make sure you get an international driving license, an international driving license. Don't just get the local, the usual license, international driving license. Let me tell you why. When you get here, if you have the international driving license, it shows them here that you have been driving for a while. So yes, you are still going to have to go here and do the driving test, but because you have some experience, they will let you do the, the, the online test and then the road test. If you do not have an international driving license, they do not have any evidence to show that you've been a driver. So you will be expected to start over. In other words, what they're going to give you is what is called a driver's permit. You have to wait six months before you can do the driver's test or before you can drive a car. 
So you want to get the right license at the right time. The next thing you're going to need to get is the state nursing license. Whatever state you are sent to, they, they, that state also has to give you a, nurse, a, a state nursing license for you to operate in that state. Different, uh, uh, depending on the employer and the recruiter you're going to have, they're going to say you might be sent to North or South Carolina where I am, you might be sent to New Jersey, wherever you're sent to, you need to have the state nursing license. So when you arrive, whatever state you'd have arrived to, arrived at or in um you're going to have to wait for your social security once you've been given that you need your social security and your driver's license for you to apply for that state nursing license you're seeing how it's important to get all of these things okay okay then the next thing you're going to need is to have an apartment lease okay so the bad thing about that is that if you don't have a credit history which you won't have because you have not been in the United States, it's very hard for an, an apartment to give you a lease. So that's why you want to work with a recruiter that is going to act as your sponsor or your guarantor so that you can have an apartment lease. Alternatively, if you know somebody, you can talk to them, somebody who is already here, and they would act as your guarantor. Now, integrity is going to be very important for us nurses as we come in. Because the Kenyans who are here, they would like to help you, but again, people are scared. For example, if I sign for you your lease and you don't stay in there or you disappear or you don't pay, that's on me. Nobody wants to take that kind of responsibility. Okay. Another thing you're going to need is a car or a rental or an Uber to be taking you around. You're going to need to find a bank that works for you. Again, when you find the bank, Remember, I've mentioned something about credit history. Building your credit is going to be important. If you don't have a credit history, you cannot be given a, a credit card, which is what you use here most of the time. Um, so it's going to be important to have, identify a bank that helps you uh, uh, create your credit history quickly. You want to connect with Kenyans in, you know, in the, uh, the Kenyan groups in the state that you go to. If you already have nurses that have gone ahead, you want to go ahead and join those groups so that you can learn from them, you can hear what they're talking about. You want to know the school where your children uh, are going to go to, okay? Again, for those of you who are going to choose to work with us, we'll help you more in how to identify the bank, the driver's license, the state licenses, and all of that information, okay? All right, so. I know your biggest question now is how much does it cost? How much does it cost? And I've gone through some of that. So how much money does one need during this process? What are some of the ways of getting these finances? How much money should you have when you arrive? So how much money are you going to need? I have a slide that is going to uh, talk about that. So let me talk about what are some of the ways of getting these finances? If you are a nurse and you're working for the government, if you're a nurse right now, you're working for the government, you can borrow from the bank just by the fact that you're working for the government. So you want to figure out how much money this whole process is going to take you so that when you take that loan, you take it. By the way, when you come here, you'll be able to get their money and send it back to them. So let that help you. Um, uh, cooperatives, be a member of a cooperative. That way you can borrow some money to help you. Um, I don't know what other ways they are. <laughs> to get money but those are the two that i have on top of my head the, i know those who work for the government they say you can get uh, you can get a loan from the bank M most of the time if they, if you say you're a nurse they know the nurses uh, get money good money or uh, have a secure job especially the ones with the government that's why they're giving them the loans but you want to identify where you're going to get this money way in advance if you're not if you're thinking about this process start attending uh contributing to a cooperative so that you can borrow the money when the time comes to help you with this because you will definitely be able to pay it back. How much money should I have when I arrive in the United States? I would recommend at least have between 200 and maybe two, between 250 and, and 500,000 Kenya shillings. That's around $2,500 to $5,000. Why? Because the agency is going to pay for you for one month. But remember I've told you there, Sometimes the license might take two to three weeks. The social security might take two to three weeks. Remember, you're already here. So it might take a month, might end before you've started earning. Because before you have the, the nurse's license, you cannot work, therefore you're not earning yet. So, but you're going to need to pay um, your rent. You're going to need to survive. So you need that money, okay? 
So here is a breakdown of the costs. I had already mentioned some in advance, but you need for the TOEFL, the islets, you need about 36,000. That's for your testing and preparation. Your document verification for your transcript from your school, you need about five to 10,000 Kenya shillings. From the National Council of Kenya, you need about 20,000. Uh, CGFNS, about 40,000. Um, the NCLEX exam, the test and preparation, you need about 40,000. Um, you need about um, 100,000 if you're going to go to India, if you're going to go to, um, you're going to go to South Africa, you might need about 200. So it's the 350 is combined. If it's India, it's going to be 100. If it's uh, uh, South Africa, it's going to be 200. Your flight to the US, you need between 100 and 200,000. Uh, I mean, 200,000 Kenya shillings, which is about $2,000. Um, your visa, it's about 35,000 Kenya shillings. Your medical, I said, it's going to be about 60 to 100,000 Kenya shillings. Settling in the US, like I mentioned, you need about 200 to 500. You're needing your accommodation money, you're needing your transport money, you're needing your feeding money, okay? So as you can see, it is quite a hefty investment, but it is doable because you are going to be able to get this back in less than a year, okay? So you have time to think about it. i said the process takes about one to two and a half years. So in one to two and a half years, you can put your preparation together and you can start thinking since you know the money that is going to be needed. And it's at different stages. So you'll get your money for your TOEFL, knock that out. The one for your verification, like your certificates, you can go ahead and start getting that together, sending it to the National Council so that you're just waiting for that window to send it to CGFNS. So that way you'll get, as you get the money, you're rolling these things out. That's why I said, have like a, a plan so that you know at this point I need this, at this point I need this and all that, okay? Your medical, your visa and all that. So I hope that helps. I hope that helps you. I hope that gives you enough. I know it was a lot of information in a short time, but I really hope that it is helpful. And uh, I would want to just hand back over to Christine. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you have been helped. That is, like you said, that was quite a bit of information. I hope ladies and gentlemen, you've been able to take notes. Uh, Joyce, if you can just stop your sharing. Okay. So that then I have the screen back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I see we still have a full house here. I said there was a technicality with the account, but that affects those people who are not able to log in. You guys are here. And so um, you've been able to get most of that information now. Uh, along the way, Joyce had said, for those, of us, for those of you who choose to work with us, maybe I need to break that down a little. Um, there's one question and I have listed down all the questions that you have, um, you have put in the chat. I've listed down all the questions that you've put in the chat. If you haven't already put your question in the chat, I would recommend that you do that. Because after this, I'm just giving Joyce time to have a sip of water she's going to be answering most of the questions that are in the chat. I've been, I've been noting them and I'm going to uh, shoot them to Joyce one by one so that then she's able to address them. But during her presentation, Joyce mentioned that uh, those of you who might be wanting to work with us, this is the format in which Joyce is going to be able to work with you. There are two levels on which you can work with Joyce. The first thing that you can do is you can book a one-to-one -one call with Joyce. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of details to do with your personal experience, your personal circumstances, and you don't want to share them here in public, depending on your age, your status, your experience, your particular experience, you want to have a one-to-one -one call with Joyce. Joyce is offering one hour of her time. If you want to engage with Joyce for one whole hour, ask her all the questions you want, have her give you the information. By now you have established that A, Joyce has all the information you need and B, she's willing to share that with you. So Joyce is going to be taking during the next, we start this next week and she has only, as you know already, Joyce is a practicing nurse with two jobs at least. So she only has a limited amount of time, but she's going to offer you one hour of her time. The cost of that is $100. If you want to be able to book with Joyce, you can drop a line now. I have put in the chat already our email address and our email address is diasporanursing at gmail.com. 
If you drop a line to diaspora nursing, it's in the, it's in the chat, you will see that from me, diaspora nursing at gmail.com. That email address, you can put that there. You can even put it in the chat right now and say, I would like to book a one-to-one -one call with Joyce and I'm going to get in touch with you and we can schedule that during the next one week. Now, if that is not going to be enough and I'm only going to take a few people for this one because we want to make it this very uh, exhaustive, but Joyce has come up with a program that is going to last four weeks during the month of, um, of July. During the month of July, Joyce is going to do a four week program entitled Diaspora Nursing Career. And this briefly is what she's going to be talking about. The first session is going to be about the opportunity. I'm very sure you have discovered that in a brief 90 minutes, Joyce is not able to share all the information that you need in order to be able to make the relocation. What are the benefits? What are the, um, how much am I going to earn? And we're going to be addressing that just now because what we are proposing is a job that is going to pay you within three years what you would have earned in your entire career practicing in Africa. You can be in a nurse for the rest of your life and earn a particular amount, or you can go ahead and earn that amount in the next three years. So that then you have your whole life ahead of you and you can decide, do I want to continue to be a nurse? Do I want to live in the US? Do I want to live in Kenya? All those are going to be available to you because you will have earned a lot of money during a short time. So that is what is going to be um, shared during the first, um, uh, module of this program. During the first module, we are going to be talking about a lot of statistics, experiences, and we are going to be having practicing nurses in America come on the program and share with you their experiences, allow you to ask the questions. Second module, we are going to exhaustively talk about the process. How does this look? Because all we are telling you is sit for your NCLEX, get this and that. We are going to have experts come on. We are going to be talking to you about every stage that you need. Now I have gotten this, what do I need next? Now I have gotten this, what do I need next? So the second uh, module is going to be talking about the process, the how-to of getting yourself a job in the US and relocating with your family to the US. The third module is going to be talking about what life is like in the diaspora and specifically in the US. A lot of people go to this America and become drug addicts and get lost in one way or another. And everybody has a relative who disappeared, who doesn't ever come home, whose paperwork is not right and all of this. So we are going to be talking about the pitfalls you want to avoid. We want to be talking about the culture shock that you're going to have to cope with. We're going to be talking about how to deal with loneliness I know of a particular case of a lady who, who relocated to Canada and over the first nine months, she was not able to, to be rejoined with her family. It took nine months for her husband and her child to join her in Canada. But by the time she, they got there, she was clinically depressed because this is one place where it's snowing all day. She's been raised in Kenya. It's sunny all the time. People are friendly. Coping with loneliness is a real issue. So we are going to be talking about what life is like in the diaspora. We are not uh, flashing rosy cards in front of you. We are giving you the truth. We are showing you what are the circumstances, what do you expect and how can you cope? If you are still in this meeting, we've been going on for 90 minutes, you're obviously serious about this. You want to get a realistic picture. So the third module in this course is what life is like in the diaspora. And finally, we are going to be talking about financial success. In the fourth module, we are going to be talking about financial su success. It's one thing to make a lot of money. It's another thing to keep it. It's another thing to grow it. So we are going to be talking about the money mindset. We are going to be teaching you budgeting. We are going to be talking about investing a common sense approach, some of the mistakes that people make. And the quick example that comes to my mind is putting up a huge house in Shads. All of us who are in Africa know that a lot of people who have had a good career, whether uh, in the diaspora or here at home, have gone and invested in a huge house at home where they could have invested that in something that will create cash flow for them. So we are going to be talking about 
financial freedom achievable within five years, how to invest in the US, and that's going to be the fourth module. Now, these four modules are what we are referring to as diaspora nursing career program. And that starts in the month of April. The cost of that is $250. So there's two ways in which you can work with us. You can work with us for, you can have one, um, one uh, hour of Joyce's time where you engage her and ask her all the questions you want and get her to answer them. The cost of that is $100. If you want to take the four week program that I have just gone through, the cost of that is $250. Now I have two pieces of great news. The first piece of great news is this. If you have booked the, if you have booked the one-to-one -one call with Joyce and now you want to graduate to the four-week program, the $100 you have paid is already your down payment. So instead of paying $250, you only have to pay $150 to do the four-week program. So that's the first offer. The second offer is this. The first 10 people to sign up for the diaspora nursing program are going to get the one-on-one -on -one call with Joyce for free. So that if you are already on the, on the training program, you get a free session with Joyce, which would otherwise have costed you $100. So it's a first come, first serve basis. The first uh, uh, 10 people to sign up are going to be able to get this offer. And to get that, all you have to do is to indicate in the chat that Christine, please get in touch with me. I am interested in this. Christine, get in touch with me. I would like this. We are going to get in touch with you and we are going to sign you up for whichever program you want to sign up for because these programs are starting next week. If you have any questions, you can keep on putting them in the chat. At this point, I want to address the questions to Joyce. Joyce, if you are ready, I have the questions here that people have been putting in the chat. Okay. Uh, and I think the first question to ask is this, Joyce, how much does a nurse make in the US? We're talking about money here. Why don't we just go into some figures? How much does a nurse make in the US? So a nurse, uh, starting nurse makes about $29 an hour. $29 an hour, um, that's your regular pay. If you go ahead and do overtime, you're going to be looking at $43 an hour for every overtime, okay? So uh, thank you. So on a monthly basis, Kenya, just shilling. quickly, on a monthly basis, how much does that come to? Uh, okay, oh, that is interesting. Interesting. At least we're looking at about four thousand, four thousand dollars a month. You're paid every but two weeks. Your starting pay when you get to the US is roughly four thousand dollars. If you translate that to Kenya shillings, it's roughly it's close to five hundred thousand shillings per month. Up, at least so half a million. Going yeah. to be landing in the US and getting a job, and this is you having correct papers and arriving there quite legally. Your beginning salary is something like about a half a million shillings. So that should be able to draw a picture that uh, of, of, of the amount of money we are talking about. Now, to the questions in the chat, I'm just going through one by one. And if you have it, if you don't hear me mentioning your question, you can always put it back in. Can I train as a chemical dependency addiction nurse in the US? Yes, you can. Okay. Um, why do most agencies look for a bed capacity of above 100? I recently turned down by two agencies. I was working with a private facility and that required capacity, but unfortunately I could not get another job opportunity. Would you like to address that, Joyce? Um, agencies insist on, on, on hospitals that have a bed capacity of above 100? Yes, um, and like I said, you're, working with a, you're going to be working with a recruitment agency. So this recruitment agency is attached to certain hospitals. Okay, so they can only recruit for that hospital depending on the requirement of the hospital. I don't want you to be put off by the bed capacity. Okay, um, like I said in the presentation, at this point, you want to get your foot in the door. So once your foot is in the door, you remember it's going to be a two year contract with that first employer. After that, you have your permanent residence and you can work anywhere in the United States. So don't be put off by, you know, I don't think I like this. Don't be choosy at the beginning. You want your foot in the door, okay? So the recruiter, the answer to your question is that the, the hospital for which they are recruiting for gives them their specifications. So you have to meet those specifications for them to recruit you. 
Okay, I have, a, I have this question from quite a few people. Do they only take a degree or can a diploma do? A lot of nurses in the group are saying they have a diploma. And so do they have to have a degree in nursing to be able to, to benefit from this? They don't have to have a degree, but they need to have had a four-year course. Remember, I stressed the four-year course. And here in the United States, they call it either it's an advanced diploma in nursing, which would have been a four-year course. If you're doing it here in the United States, you do that in a community college or a BSN, Bachelor of Science in Nursing. Okay. So it has to be a four-year course that you've gone through. Okay, I'm a caregiver in the Gulf, but not a nurse. I don't have a certificate, but I want to advance. How can I start? We already talked about the starting salary. So she's just, I think this is someone who works as a caregiver in the Gulf and wants to know, can she, can she go ahead and become a nurse? What country is she in? Is she in Kenya? Gulf sounds like they're possibly in the Middle East, possibly in Dubai or something. In the Middle East. They would still have to go through the nursing program. Okay, just asking, and I need an honest answer. Is there an age limit that cannot start this journey to the US? No, and that's why I started by addressing my 60 and over. Remember, I started by addressing those people who are, according to in Kenya, you probably have retired. No, a nurse in, in, in the United States can work up to the age of 90, 100. The, I think the oldest nurse I was reading the other day, she's about 90, 90 something years old and she's working. Oh, beautiful. Okay, my question yeah. is, do you support specialized nurses like ICU nurse and nurse taste? I'm not sure what the question is. Do we support specialized nurses? The specialized nurses have a better opportunity because um, more, more hospitals want them. So you'll see like even the recruiting agencies, uh, they are going to be asking if you're a specialized nurse, like ICU nurse, um, uh, you know, dialysis nurse, you have better opportunity because of the speciality that you have. Another thing that people can do, if you're considering this journey, I would go ahead and do some speciality, do some speciality. Um, and there are also some speciality courses that you can do. For example, you could go ahead and uh, apart from just having your BLS, you can go and do your SELS. Just make sure you have some of those things. It markets you better, it positions you better, it makes you stand out. Okay, what about other medical fields such as nutritionists, medical records professionals? Is there such a program for them? No, there could be, but I don't know. I'm a nurse, so I'm just I'm just doing the nurses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I think that answers the, the other person who also asked their therapeutic um, massage therapist. We are yeah. in the, in this specific presentation. We are addressing nurses. Is Adevia a good agency? Is who? Adevia. I don't know if it's uh, pronounced Adevia. I don't know. Guys, you need to excuse me. I'm not. How aware. did they spell it? Spell it? A D E V I A. Adevia. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, it's a good agency. All right. It's a good agency. And like I said, go to the website of the agency, make sure they have that seal. Remember the ethical seal I was talking about? Mm. If they have that seal, they are a good agency. Okay. All right, how can I get an NCLES RN book? I think someone wants to, uh, what books would you recommend? Uh, Joyce held up a book for the NCLES. I held up a book, yeah. I held up a book and there is many of them. There is different, different ones. Um, I don't want to recommend any because um, uh, there are many. Kaplan is a good one. Um, um, Xavier is a good, there are many. Like it just depends on it. Remember, like I said, the NCLEX exam is, uh, they are testing your competency. The reason why you're even going to be practicing is so that you understand how to take an American exam. It's a little different from, especially from the way we are taught in Kenya. So, yeah. Okay, a very good question here. Is there a limit to the number of children one can go with? I think no, he, as long as limit in age and also limit in number of children. If my children are already adults, can I go with them? Or if my children are five or six or seven, we are in Africa, is there a limit to the number of children and the age of children that I can go with? There is no limit to the number of children as long as they are your biological children. If they are adopted children, you must have the right paperwork, okay? 
Okay. That's usually a little sticky point because of the adoption and all that. But your biological children, if they are yours, good. They have to be below 21 years old. After that, they are considered odd adults. Actually, let me take that back. 18, 21, you would come first and then apply for them. But any 18 and below, you can come with them. Okay, okay. Does having a master's in public health help after having a BSN? Oh, uh, just having, okay. Once you come here, the BSN is what is going to bring you here, okay? So once you come here, then you can look for different opportunities. Um, the answer is yes, because, uh, but it, yes, but the condition is you're going to have to probably work with a public health hospital. So that is where your advantage is going to come in. I have always wanted to go, but I don't have money to pay for the exams. Can I get some sponsorship to do the exams? I'm not very sure about, just, jo Joyce, how would you answer that? <clears throat> that would be very hard. I would focus on working hard to look for the money for the exam. It's 20,000 Kenya shillings. Of course, you're going to have to study for it. So you need a little bit more to buy your book or to get the mentor who is going to help you. Um, I don't know. I don't know if there are any people sponsoring for that. And that's why I was giving you the options of their loans that you can take. Join a cooperative, be contributing some money. That way you can take the loan uh, to do what you need to do. Because again, this is an investment and you're putting in an investment for to get more money. So unfortunately, the way the world operates, you need money to make money. So um, answer, short answer, no, there are no sponsors. I don't know of any. You know. All right. Well, the way I would answer that myself, and that applies more more broadly to life. Not <coughs> where there is a will, there is a way. Money always follows good ideas. Good ideas never follow money. Now that you become aware of the need, if you are determined, you can raise the money. If you are determined, you can raise the money. I've had circumstances in my life that had been very crazy, but I found a way out because I had no option. If you make this a must do, you will find a way to do it. Um, one final question here about now guys you need to understand that it might be difficult for us to answer all your questions here and that's why i'm recommending and i already saw a lot of people who have texted me personally here saying they want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with joyce once again if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one session with joyce that's where you're able to to pose the more personal questions to her to have her address your specific issue we are offering you a one-hour call with joyce where you can have one-on-one -on -one time with her and have her answer your questions. The cost of that is just $100. So get in touch with me. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping that everyone here has put their name, email address, and WhatsApp number in the chat because we are going to put you in a group. We are going to be sending you an email. You're going to receive an email from the address diaspora nursing at gmail.com where we are going to be addressing uh, a lot of the questions that you're asking and letting you know when we're going to have other engagements like this we obviously need to do this again because a lot of people were shut out of the room and so we are going to have to clarify to fix that and do this again i'm going to communicate that but uh one final question before we go the issue of degree and diploma is not clear to me diploma in kenya takes three and a half years or three years, kindly clarify. Okay, yeah, and I saw that question also. Um, like I said, the nursing degree here, or the, what they need is for you to have gone through a four year nursing program. So I think in Kenya, there is the diploma and then there is the higher diploma. You need, yes, you need to do the higher diploma for you to qualify for the four years. So you need so to have you need to have done the higher diploma, yeah. Because the the two year diploma, what you would be here is an equivalent is what is called a LPN, licensed practical nurse. Now, right now, they are not they haven't opened for LPNs, so that opportunity is not yet opened. I would go ahead and do my higher diploma because I think it would take you a shorter time to. You know, because you, you probably have maybe just two years or one and a half year to make it. I hope that's clear. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Someone else say, saying here anything for doctors, kindly share that in the future. Like we shared at this point, we are addressing nurses. Joyce is generously giving her information and her time. 
to help other nurses to enjoy the kind of privileged lifestyle that she has been able to achieve since moving to the US. Um, if anyone missed this or possibly you joined late, Joyce said she changed her career to nursing at the age of 40. Like I 40, said, Lady yeah. Joyce and I graduated with a Bachelor of Commerce. We were both in the marketing option and we went into commercial uh, kind of work where I'm still operating at the moment, but Joyce felt a calling towards nursing at the age of 40. So it's never too late to change careers. You can start right over and you can go ahead and have a successful career in nursing. It has been a great pleasure to host you guys. We have actually overshot the 90 minutes that we said. I see people still putting their names and email addresses in the chat. Let me have your name, your email address, and your WhatsApp number with country code on the chat so that then we are able to get in touch with you. We are going to be organizing another session like this sometime in the future. I'm going to be in touch to let you know when. But in the meantime, if you're interested to have a one-to-one -one session with Joyce, get in touch with me to schedule that. If you want to sign up for the program that we are getting ready to do, the one I call Diaspora Nursing Program, I would recommend that you get in touch with us and get that information so that then we can sign you up for the program. Um, I think I could share my number here. I'm going to put my, my WhatsApp contact in the chat so that if anyone wants to get in touch with me, they can. But the email address I already said is diasporanursing at gmail.com. It's somewhere in the chat. I'm um, just putting my number there. It's 722, okay. If you can drop me a line on that number, then I'm going to be able to get in touch with you. I'm going to be able to put you, like I said, I'm going to create a group and put people in this, um, in this initial webinar. This is the first time that we are doing this. And so we are hoping that people are going to get help, people are going to relocate, and we are going to hold your hand as we go along. So thank you very, very much. At this point, I'm going to stop the recording.